Thank you for having me. I gotta tell you, I looked at this piece of paper they sent me. Here's what I, here's who I'm following, okay? Just, this is what I looked at. So let's see. Roger Williams, Rick Perry, Dennis D'Souza, cool. Bunch of, bunch of people from the legislature. Uh, Paul Ryan, John Cornyn, Lamar Smith, Mike McCall, I take Tidman in 13 hours, Frank Lutz, Dan Patrick, A.G. Paxton, Kevin Brady, Willie Gomer, Michael Burgess, Senator Ted Cruz, Pete Sessions, Michael Conway, Bill Flores, Blake Farrell, and John Carter. I'm last. Way to go. This means you want me to make it short. I wanted to, I was sitting down right there at that table trying to figure out what the hell I was going to say today <laughs> that would be different from what you've heard. Now, you know what? I'll tell you one of the things that I'm very proud of it is I absolutely love the history of the United States and the state of Texas. Okay? And, and I, for fun, I read history books. Just finished reading two long books on the, on the Korean War. I recommend them both. One of them was given to me by the chief of staff of the army. So as I was sitting here, I said, what can I talk, we're trying to unify our party. We're trying to get into the biggest fight we've ever had. And what does it take to be in a fight? So let's start off with what does it take to be in a fight? The best people to ask as a soldier or a Marine, what does it take to be in a fight? And they'll tell you what it takes. A team. Individual warriors get killed. And soldiers and, and Marines and airmen and sailors, they go to war for, because they are, they are making sure that the guy or the gal on either side of them, that they've got their back. That's how our warriors fight. They fight for the cause of freedom and liberty for our country. They're the most patriotic people in America. But whether it be the, our police, whether it be our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guard, they go risk their lives for their fellow soldiers, fellow fighters, fellow warriors. We're a room for fellow warriors. We got in the middle of the night when the, there's one more round of phone calls to be made. We should remember that we are covering the back of, the, of the, each one of the Republicans on either side of us in a war against what I would call the ultimate downfall of America if we get another four or eight years of Democrat insanity. Yeah. So we're in war. Now, take that. Why do we fight for each other? And then add to it, look a little, a little look at history. Let's start with this flag right here. If you dig deep, or even if you watch some of the shows they got on television these days, which are pretty good, you'll find out in the middle of the Constitutional Congress, George Washington stepped up and said, I'm leaving and I'm going to form an army and I'm going to stop the bridge. Not everybody thought George Washington was the right guy to do that. In fact, Benedict Arnold thought he should have been doing it and he betrayed his country because he thought he should have been doing it. But there were plenty of people in that very common that wondered why Washington. He didn't do that great in the uh, French and Indian War. But remember what they did when they wrote the Declaration of Independence? The most prominent men in the colonies signed that document and the last line was, to this we pledge our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. And every, um, every colonist Future Americans read that, and when they stepped up and grabbed their musket and went out to meet the, the British, that's what they knew they had pledged to do. Stand up and fight for those causes. We pledge our lives, our fortune, our sacred honor, and they kept their pledge, and they went to war behind Washington, even though some of them may not have, at first, thought he was the right guy. 
and we won our independence. Now let's talk about our flag, the flag we revere, the Texas flag. You know, we love our island. Our, they give us more grief, and Connor went back me up on this, about the Alamo in Congress than anything else in the world. But you know, let's look at the Alamo as they gather from three different sources, sort of, sort of regular army, Travis, sort of local ruffians, Bowie, and then sort of visitors from another state who just thought they'd come down to see what the fight was all about, Crockett. And they gathered inside one building, and guess what? All three of those men were colonels. Colonel Crockett, Colonel Bowie, Colonel Travis, colonel of their group. So there's no ranking officer. But there's one guy with a uniform, one guy that has been sent by the folks gathering down on the Brazos to try to get our republic started, and that was Travis. The most unpopular of the three colonels, Travis led the Alamo. And those guys inside there, they fought for each other, and they fought for Texas. And you know what? I look my critics in the eye in Washington and say, yeah, you may think we lost that battle, but those 13 days that that 180 men held off 5,000 Mexicans in the army, the largest army on the face of North America at the time. Yes. And in those 13 days, our republic was born. So they birthed our nation. And they died for it. They didn't pick the, the people following Crockett. They didn't pick Travis. The people following Bowie, they didn't pick Travis. But they fought behind Travis, and they won. And wait a minute, it ain't over. Now, we, now we've written the, the document to create our republic, but we still have a war to win. And as, as Houston gathered the army and started moving towards the Louisiana border, there's a, there's a bunch of books you can get your hands on from the, the Library of Congress, and, and it's kind of a series of books about the lieutenants, the people that were under Houston, and what they thought about Houston when they started that march, which looked like it was towards Louisiana. And they thought he was a coward. And they couldn't, they were mad as heck at him. And they all wrote bad things about him. And yet, those soldiers who had made their pledge to Texas, they kept their pledge and they marched forward with Houston. And even though they were getting pretty worried that he might be headed to Louisiana, when they got to the San Jacinto River, he turned, knowing that the Mexican army had the river behind them and couldn't run. And in a very short battle, whipped Santa in his butt. And did they all support Houston? No. But they fought for each other. And they fought for their cause that we, they all stood for, and they won. Now we've all, we had 17 people to pick through in this fight. One guy's come out on top, Donald Trump. And the, I understand that all 17 probably had somebody in this room this morning. But it's over. Folks, it's over. And we have, we have the battle. To end all battles, face this. And remember, as you go to work and you, you actually get the job done, and you will, I am absolutely convinced, I know who's in this room. You'll get it done. But when you're doing it, remember, it's not just for Donald Trump and, and Mike Pence. It's for every American, you got every American's back to make sure we won't have a ruinous government for four more years to make sure we will move our nation in the right direction, and we will. So we got each other's back, this fight is ours. Fight like an American soldier to win this battle. God bless you, God bless the great state of Texas and the great United States of America. To war!